All right guys, BLM here, back with a new video. In this video, I'll be talking about my top 10, kind of, idol plays in international Survivor history. And for the purposes of this video, I'll only be talking about English language seasons of Survivor. Now, idols in international Survivor is a bit more of a recent thing. There aren't actually that many seasons that have idols, and considering I'll only be talking about the times where an idol was played successfully, that really narrows down the field here. Again, I won't be talking about other moves that involve idols, like Benji's play at the Matt Rogers boot, or any unsuccessful idol plays. So, as of 2019, the only seasons I can talk about are seasons 4 through 7 of Survivor South Africa, and the 4 seasons of the 10 play series of Australian Survivor. Now, I rounded up every successful idol play from those seasons, and there are literally only 15, with four of those coming from this year. So, again, there aren't that many, but I might as well talk about all of them, really, since we're here. So, I'll kind of start off with the honorable mentions here, so let's just run through these pretty quickly. So, at number 15, the bottom, I have the Matt Boot from Champions vs. Contenders 2, and this one's just kind of boring. I mean, there was a split vote. Matt goes home after Harry plays his idol. There's not really much intrigue there. At number 14, I have the Marion boot from Survivor South Africa Champions, and the same thing. I mean, there is a split vote. Shane plays his idol successfully. However, there is a tie between Marion and Graham because Altoff was an idiot and almost ruined the split vote. But Marion still goes home in the revote, so it didn't really matter. At number 13, I have the Sean boot from Survivor South Africa Maldives, which I do think is a fascinating tribal, and a lot of that comes from the fact that it's pretty close to being an advantage get-in situation, where through the use of an idol play, the white cowry, and individual immunity, one side was always going to win out on that vote, so Sean was kind of screwed there, and I think because of that, that kind of takes away from the spectacle of the actual idol play, so I have it at 13. At number 12, I have the Casey boot from Australian Survivor Champions versus Contenders, which was... Pretty boring again. Again, it was pretty obvious Casey was going home, but there was the fun moment of Casey freaking out when Janine didn't play her idol for her, and you could just see the sense of dread on her face, and I think that is fun to watch. And at number 11, the final honorable mention here is the Cindy boot from Survivor South Africa Maldives, which was fine. I mean, again, Roxy and Vanessa were the two underdogs of the season. Roxy was able to successfully play her idol for Vanessa. However, I think a lot of the problem with these older South Africa seasons is that these idol plays don't really have the gravitas of these newer ones, where the editing didn't really portray this as, like, such a massive thing. And I think because that loses some of its luster there. And also, they take out Cindy, who's, like, a nothing character. So it's here at number 11. We're now moving on to the real list. We're at number 10. And at number 10, I have an idol play from Champions vs. Contenders 1. And that is when Anita gets idled out by Heath. And what makes this one stand out to me is that Heath nullified every single vote except for his. I mean, that's really the main thing here. I mean, the fact that Heath was the sole vote here, voting out Anita. But really, outside of that, it's, it's not that great. I mean, Anita was the correct move for Heath as the person voted out this tribal would go to exile with Tegan, and the winner of that comp goes back to the game, with Tegan being Heath's closest ally. Obviously, sending Anita, who was the weakest and the easiest to beat, was the right move. But I didn't think it would have been a more impactful idol play if he booted someone like a, like a Robbie or a Benji or like some, a bigger name. But it's still fun to see Heath's name come up so many times, so it's here at number 10. At number 9, I have another pretty average idol play, really, and that is the Vanilla Boot from Champions vs. Contenders 1. And the only thing that makes this one stand out to me isn't even the actual idol play itself. I mean, Sharn does play her idol successfully. When everyone was thinking it was going to be a 2-2-2 two to two to two vote, leading to a Shane Boot on the revote. But for some reason that I, I still don't understand... Brian Lake switches his vote from Shane to Sharn, making it a 3-2-1 to two to one vote. Shane and Sharn essentially pick the boot here, and they end up booting Fenella. It's kind of a similar situation to the Tyson boot, where a person in the majority flips their vote to the other vote split target, and in doing so, ruins the vote split. However, Brian didn't go home here. I believe he had immunity, so it's like... It's not as strong of a thing as, like, the Tyson boot or really many other idol plays in general, but 
It is still a somewhat interesting one, so it's here at number nine. At number eight, I have an idol play from Survivor South Africa Champions, and that is the Xavion boot at the final five, where Sivu idols him out of the game. And this is a fun one. I, again, I think the problem with this one is it doesn't have the gravitas of a lot of these better ones. It doesn't have the spectacle of a lot of these later tribals, where this is a pretty good one, where like Sivu gets, I mean, he gets the idol in a pretty questionable way. And to be fair, it wouldn't happen on modern day Survivor, but he still has an idol. He is the target at the final five, and no one knows he has the idol. And Graham, Xavion, and David are the majority here, with Xavion being the bigger physical threat and being pretty openly cocky about his position in the game, thinking that really nothing could go wrong. But we get the tribal where Sivu is really throwing like a pity party for himself, and everyone at tribal is convinced that he's pretty much just giving up. But nope, he plays his idol, shocking everyone, blindsides Xavion. And it is a fun moment. I really love how Xavion handles this too, where he seems very impressed by Sivu. And is very joyful when he leaves the game. And this also leads to him giving Sivu his jury vote. But again, it's very slow paced. It's literally a three minute segment just for the idol play and then the reading of five votes. And then also once the idol is played, you know Xavion is going home. So really, it's here at number eight. Now at number seven, I have an idol play from Australian Survivor 2017, and it's actually the only successful idol play from this season, and that is the Tarzan boot, where Tarzan finds an idol, he gives it to Tessa, allowing Tessa to nullify six votes, including a vote from Tarzan himself, and Tarzan goes home due to a split vote against him. And what is there to say? I mean, this is a weird one that I did initially place lower on the list, but I kind of thought about it more, and it's, it is so ridiculous. I felt like I had to move it up. I obviously here, Tarzan gets idled out by his own idol. But what does lessen the impact of this idol play is the fact that Tarzan was essentially giving up his game for Tessa. I mean, he wanted to guarantee that Tessa made it to the next round and purposely left himself vulnerable being okay if he went home. So that does cheapen out this idol play. Like it would have been better if Tarzan was like really gung-ho about playing the game. It was really strategic and everything and then ends up making a massive blunder here. But really it was more so just Tarzan wanting to be a good guy. And that does lessen the impact of it. So it's here at number seven. Now at number six, we have an idol play or really idol plays here from Survivor South Africa Philippines. And that is the Shanae boot where we have three idols played, one from Palesa, which didn't matter. We have one from PK, who was supposed to be blindsided here, and he was able to nullify five votes against them. And in retaliation to that, Werner played his own idol as he would have gone home if he didn't play his idol after PK played his, and he nullified two votes. And it was a fun thing to see. I mean, it was fun to see the immunity train sort of thing where three people in a row played their idols. And unlike something like Avanged Geddon, we did get votes actually read. I mean, it does lead to a one-to-one -one tie between Shawnee and Tom. And on the revote, Shawnee goes home. And this is still a pretty crazy result, even though it pretty much just continued the pagonging on the season. But for me, it was probably the best tribal of the entire post-merge here. But what does knock it a bit for me is that, again, it just continued the pagonging. It was kind of a letdown after you saw the votes were tied between Shawnee and Tom, as you knew Shawnee was going home. So for me, it lands here at number six. Now at number five, I have another idol play from Survivor South Africa Philippines, and that is the final five vote where Katinka is blindsided after Werner plays his idol for Jean, nullifying three votes against her, making Katinka go home in a two to one to zero vote. And in my top 10 Tribal Council video, I did place this one lower than the Shawnee boot, but I do think as an idol play itself, this one is a bit more fun to watch. As I mentioned in my US idol play video, I really love it when an idol is played for someone else. And for me, this is essentially the South African version of the Natalie Anderson move at the final five where she blindsides Baylor. Now, obviously it worked out a lot better for Natalie where Werner is actually the next one to go home, but it was still the correct move for Werner to make here where Annalise and Katinka were completely against them at this point and he had to split them up. Though I do think he should have gotten rid of Annalise instead of Katinka, but really it didn't matter that much. But keeping Jean was the right move as she was more likely to be loyal to him moving on, even though she obviously ended up not being loyal. 
But this was still a really fun idol play and the return of really fun gameplay on this season that had been a bit dry for a little while after pretty long pagonging. So it lands here at number five. Now at number four, I have a pretty recent idol play and that is from Champions vs. Contenders 2 and that is the Hannah boot where David successfully plays his idol and nullifies three votes against him causing a 2-2-1 two to two to one tie between Sean and Hannah where Hannah goes home on the Revo, and as an idol play, it's very strong. I mean, I don't think the idol play itself is as strong as the tribal as a whole. I mean, it is a really complicated vote where Andy wants to get rid of Daisy and tries to get David and Luke on board, but they want to vote for Sean. And there's also a split vote from the majority going on here between David and Hannah, but Luke thinks it's on him instead of Hannah, so he wastes his idol. But then the votes are revealed, obviously, and it's Hannah instead, which leads to a revote where Hannah goes anyway, and that is the mark against it for me. I mean, it would be an all-time great idol play if someone like Sean or Daisy went home, but I mean, it's it's Hannah. <laughs> she was a complete non-factor on the season, and her going home at such an epic tribal is kind of disappointing. But also, I mean, good for the season, but but not necessarily great for the ranking of this idol play. So while it was a very fun and chaotic tribal, the idol play itself just isn't as great, though it's still really fun, so it still lands here at number four. But now at number three, I have another recent idol play, and that is from Survivor South Africa, Island of Secrets, and it's the only successful idol play on that season. But then again, it's also probably the high point of that entire season, and that is this Steffi boot, where she's technically taken out by default, but the votes were read anyway, and she, I mean, she does get voted out, Anyway, that is kind of my biggest problem with this idol play. To be honest, it would be number one if that wasn't the fact. Steffi goes home no matter how the idols are played or not. Like, it didn't really matter. Where it was a two to two to one vote, where really the one vote was a split vote, which didn't even make sense, but whatever, that was the rationale on the show. And to be honest, that made me even consider not even putting it on the list. However, technically the idols are played successfully and technically votes are nullified, so it's like, I still considered it a successful idol play, so it is here. And also, really, just the reason why it's so high, though, is the spectacle here is just incredible. I mean, like the last one, this would have definitely made the top tribal council list if I were to make it now. But as an idol play, it can be looked at as a bit underwhelming. Once the idols are played, Steffi is obviously going home. But there's so many great moments here. I mean, from Nicole's speech as she plays the idol for Doral about how... Feminism is about strong men and how Doral is a strong man like Nathan and it's like it's so dumb. And then the idol train of Rob then playing his idol for Nicole and then Letitia playing hers for herself and also Letitia saying to Steffi that for me there's always tomorrow or something to that nature and then we have Steffi in shock which is fun to see. Steffi furiously closing her backpack. We have Nicole's telling Steffi that you betrayed the Amigos. Like, it's like, it's so much fun. I've watched this scene so many times over and over again. And to be fair, there might be recency bias here. Obviously, this idol play happened pretty recently. But I just love this one. I really do. I mean, it's possibly one of my favorite vote outs in the history of International Survivor. And it, it's a good contender for one of the top tribal councils of all time. And as an idol play, it's strong as well. But again... The idols didn't really matter here. But it was just so good TV that I had to put it at number three, but it still left it out of the top two. Now for number two, I have an idol play from Australian Survivor 2016. And this is one I've already talked about in my Tribal Council video, and that is the Rowan boot, where Rowan gives his idol to his closest ally, Phoebe, and she successfully plays the idol on herself, nullifying five votes meaning that the votes of the old Aganoa are the only ones that matter. And the plan is to vote for Sue. However, Rowan hates Cat, so he votes for Cat. As, I mean, it shouldn't matter, right? But what he didn't realize is that Cat and Christy were dumb as well and put their votes on Rowan, pretty much because they didn't like him. But this does end up being a 2 to 1 to 1 to 0 vote where Rowan goes home due to his own idol. And there's so many factors that make this one fun. Again, being voted out by his own idol, Rowan's vote just stopping the possibility of a revote, his supposed allies being the ones to vote him out when they could have taken out a member of the majority. There's just so many things fun here. I mean, it is an all-time great idol play, even when we're talking about US Survivor as well. It's fantastic. It really is. 
and it solidly places here at number two. But now for number one, the number one idol play of all time for me should be pretty clear at this point. And it also comes from Australian Survivor 2016. And that is the Craig blind side where Phoebe plays her idol successfully on herself, nullifying four votes against her and voting out Craig, the leader of the opposing alliance. And for me, a major reason why I have this placed above the row and boot, which is probably more of a spectacle, is because the result of that idol play was completely an accident. And the context behind it is fantastic, but technically the result is just the result of a vote split but with the craig blind side here it's a legitimate game changing idol play getting rid of craig one of the best players of the season one of the best characters of the season so losing him was such a massive blow to this show but also a spectacular way to see him be taken out but he did have a pretty game ending flaw here in not splitting the votes when they could have they could have just put the votes on christy i mean christy would have just went home after the idol play i don't know why they didn't do that and also the context of the idol that Phoebe played being an idol that she found after seeing Craig looking for that same idol after he found a clue for it is pretty fun as well. So overall, I do think that this is the best idol play in international Survivor history. It's really what Phoebe is most remembered for. It's one of the most iconic moments in the history of Australian Survivor. So I do feel like it perfectly fits here at number one. So there we go. Those are my rankings of all the idol plays in international Survivor history. So yeah, I mean, we end up talking about all of them in some aspect, but I, I thought it was fun to talk about despite there not being many idle plays to begin with. But yeah, that's the video. Thank you for watching.